Okay guys, so today I'm having a look at a whole bunch of SwiftTech products for PC water cooling. Now this is quite a specific video for people you know, interested in these specific products and interested in water cooling. Um, so what I'm looking at is the MCP35X SwiftTech pump and all the accessories you can buy for it from SwiftTech, uh, which is a reservoir and also a heatsink to cool the pump. And the other thing that I'm looking at at the same time is the new upgrade for the SwiftTech Apogee XT water block. Uh, basically, it's um, you know the top of the water block, uh, and you replace that, and it increases the flow, uh, and it upgrades the water block to revision two. But you don't need to go out and buy a whole new water block. Um, you can do it a lot more cheaply and just buy the buy the uh, revision two top. So you can see all the boxes for everything um, behind there. We've got the box for the pump the box for the water block, the box for the water block upgrade, the box for the heatsink for the SwiftTech MCP35X um, and also the box for the reservoir. So I've finished installing the revision 2 top onto the SwiftTech Apogee XT water block. From this angle it looks exactly the same as revision 1. All the changes are on the inside of the water block. Now, see if you can see the difference between them. There is quite an obvious difference between them. Now, all, the only reason for the difference is to improve flow and improve the performance of the water block. So you can see this is angled here and here, uh, and it's not angled here and here. So you can see this plate here can actually be spun around and the reason for that is that in this configuration you can fit large fittings like large compression fittings the other configuration is for maximum flow because the hole down into the water block is actually directly under my finger here so the installation of this top is very simple you just use these included allen key bolts and they go actually through the side of this hold down plate here and through the new top into the base plate which is where the this thread is. This is the, the base plate that contacts the CPU. I'm sorry about how dirty this is. This is actually quite an old water block that I've just bought the new revision 2 top for. So you can see how thin the base plate is which it should be for maximum heat transfer. So obviously included with the heatsink is all the necessary mounting hardware and fittings and included with the new revision 2 top are the 6 allen key bolts and also an insulation guide. So moving on to the SwiftTech MCP35X pump. So included with the pump is a pad with tape on either side and also some mounting screws the necessary fittings and user manual I'm just going to go over some of the specifications of the pump it's powered by a Molex connector only two pins are necessary now it's a PWM pump so it also comes with this four pin connector so the RPM of the pump ranges from 1300 to 4500 RPM the operating voltage range is from 9 to 13.4 volts DC. The maximum power and current at 12 volts is 18 watts and 1.5 amps. The maximum head of the pump is 4.4 meters. The maximum discharge is 17.5 liters per minute, which adds up to a thousand fifty liters per hour. The maximum pressure that the pump puts out is 22 psi. The threads that you can see there are standard G1 quarter inch threads. Mean time before failure is 50,000 hours. Okay now for the pump accessories. So the heatsink. 
It's got a nice smooth gloss black finish on it. You can see the fins are quite deep. Okay, so with the heatsink comes an insulation guide as well as a thermal pad mounting hardware. So moving on to the reservoir, so you can see we've got two ports just here. Here there's an o-ring there for sealing the, the base which actually fits straight onto the top of the pump. So it also has a filter, it's got a piece of mesh there and a coarse type sponge. Uh, the top just unscrews, it's got another big o-ring here. So that's where you fill it from. Quite heavy, solid top. So this comes with all the necessary mounting hardware, insulation guide and fittings. It comes with a small pin. You can see that pin there which is for mounting. It fits in one of these recesses uh, and then you can see there's a tiny little recess there as well. Okay, so the reservoir and the heat sink have been installed. So you can see I've got the ports facing forward on the reservoir, but I had six different angles to choose from. I've got the filters in the bottom there. So obviously the flow direction, the pump sucks out of the reservoir and blows the coolant out right here where my thumb is. So you've got two different options here for the tubing coming back into the reservoir. So it looks quite nice. The reservoir is pretty much flush with the top of the pump. It's pretty impressive once you get all the Swiftec components together. They're all designed for each other quite well and the quality is pretty good. So moving on to the heatsink. So you can see there's two screws holding the heatsink onto the pump. You can see they're at a diagonal there. You can just see the thermal pad there in between the pump and the heatsink. You can actually fit an 80mm fan onto the bottom of this heatsink because this heatsink is 80mm squared. Well, it should be because yeah, it fits an 80mm fan straight onto it. So to put the fan on, it's quite easy. You just undo these standoffs there. That's just a screw, Phillips head screw with a rubber, a piece of rubber around it. So you just undo that, slide the fan on, and then you can tighten this up onto the fan. So some of you guys might be thinking, why the hell do we need a heat sink and a fan on a pump that has coolant traveling through it? Well, the answer is that coolant is supposed to be cooling the components in the computer not being heated up by the pump okay so if we've got a hot pump then that pump will be heating up the coolant even more and taking a little bit of performance away from the water cooling system so this heat sink will stop the pump from heating up the pump does get very hot these little pumps they actually run quite hot. The other thing is that a lot of the time the coolant is very hot itself and it's actually the coolant heats up the pump even more. So we're just taking away a bit of that extra heat you know to stop that extra heat from going back into the system also to increase the life of the pump. Some systems where you don't have quite enough radiator capacity or someone might be doing a serious overclocking session sometimes the coolant does get very hot it gets right up over the operational temperature of, of the pump I've seen it happen so having a heat sink and a fan on your pump um, is a nice little extra addition to a high performance water cooling system so that sums up this video thanks for watching guys I hope you found it useful Please subscribe and also please favorite the video if you enjoyed it because that really helps me out. Thanks guys.